Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So I am super excited for today's video because today we are playing around with the new Candy Johnson collection with Too Faced. I am still sick a little bit so you might still hear some nasliness in my voice. It ain't fun. So yeah, Candy Johnson did I believe her first makeup collab with Too Faced and came out with a pretty good selection of products. But I know that everyone's kind of iffy about Too Faced and everyone was kind of curious as to why she would team up with them but i will say i do respect and appreciate the fact that they gave her several products like most collabs with youtubers it's just one product so i've got to commend them for that because candy johnson has been in the game for a very long time and i do think she deserves a little bit more so her collection is called the i want candy collection and everything is scented like candy or i think it's like buttercream icing it has a very very sweet scent and i think it is delicious also this collection is exclusive to ulta and the Too faced website so you can can't find it at Sephora. So the first thing I want to talk about is the Candy Liner Black Licorice Eyeliner. This is $18 and honestly I thought it would just be your typical like pointed felt tip liner. So here's what the applicator looks like. As you can see it does have an angle to it. It is a very very jet black formula. It's very pigmented. I do not like this product. This is probably my least favorite product in the collection. However I will say the angle tip does make this easier to use for the top lash line. I do find that where it's so small it just lays right on top of the lash root and you can get it really really close to the lashes. So the problem that I have with this is that the top of the angle the little the very peak of it. It's not like fine enough to make a really pretty fade. The angle is just too fat to make a wing. But this has a super, super glossy, very shiny finish. It does not set or dry down to be matte. And I just don't find that it's very flattering on the eyes. What I want to show you before I actually put my makeup on is how it works making a wing. Draw this on the top lash line and then use whatever is left over, like whatever's excess on here to do the wing. Because if you go in with this like fully saturated, it will not look very good. But here's what it looks like. Like it's definitely doable. It's not impossible to create a wing with this. Just the fact that the finish is so shiny, it's it's a no-go for me. So moving on to what I feel like is most exciting with any collection, the eyeshadow palette. So this is the I Want Candy eyeshadow palette. So here's what it looks like. It is in a tin palette. So it's kind of looking like a box of chocolates. That's the theme with this palette. It looks like a box of candy or something and then when you open it up it has this like paper protector in here it's not like the regular plastic protector that you get in a lot of things so i do think it's a nice touch it makes it look like a box of chocolates more so here's what it looks like when you first open it this is 45 dollars. you do get 15 shades and there are a mixture of mattes shimmers and satin finishes in here i would have appreciated the price being knocked down just a little bit where it doesn't have a mirror so starting right here we have sparkling cider this is described as a champagne nude and this one does have more of a satin finish it's not super shimmery or anything right next to it is pastry and they call this a matte cappuccino this is a very very pretty transition shade and it's just pretty and neutral i really do like that one for the crease next to that we have sugared strawberry which is a shimmering coral pink this is a really really shimmery almost metallic shade so cream puff is described as a matte sand shade again a really really pretty kind of neutral transition shade for the crease. Next to that is Sugar Plum and they call that a silvered lavender. And this is a super shimmery, very metallic, high shine shade. This is probably one of my favorite shades in the palette. Freaking beautiful. And the last one on this row is Raspberry Cocoa, which is a matte berry brown. And this is my favorite shade, I think, in the palette. It's very unique. Moving on to the middle row, we have Butterscotch, which they call a matte apricot shade. So this is a lot more warm. I feel like the palette's pretty cool and pretty neutral for the most part, but then you have a couple of warmer shades, and this one is definitely one of them. Next to that, we have Sweet Toffee, and they call this a Gilded Copper. So this is another really metallic shimmery shade. It's very warm, and it does have a pretty strong orange undertone to it. Next to that, we have Frosted Pink, which they call a Gilded Soft Pink. I gotta be honest, I'm not really sure what gilded means, but they're using that pretty often. So this is another really pretty metallic shimmery shade. It's pretty frosty. And then we have Hot Chocolate, which they call a matte rich brown. This is a perfect brown in my opinion. It's not too warm. It's not too cool. And then we have Taupe Berry, which they call a matte smoky taupe. I just feel like this is a lot more wearable than a lot of gray shades. And I think this works really, really pretty with the combination of shades in the palette. And of course, you got to have a matte black in here. So this is Licorice Rope. And they call this just a matte pitch black it's kind of like a carbon black it's a really good like smoking out shade it's not too like over the top to where it's hard to work with and then moving on to the last row you do have these three bigger pans but candy said that she likes to use these as mix-in mediums like that was the purpose of them but you have a more frosted shade and then you have two different like skin tone matte shades and she says that you can mix these in with any of the shades in the palette to lighten them i mean you can do that with any 
eyeshadow that's lighter so I don't really see the point in saying that they're mixing mediums because that kind of makes them sound like they're more like transformative. I do think they're good shades to have in the palette. Starting down here we have whipped cream I believe. Yeah whipped cream which they call a pearly white. So this is a very frosty shade. This is a very, very good inner corner highlight or all over the lid. It's very, very brightening. We have ice cream, which they call a matte pinky cream. I think that's perfect for it. And last we have banana cream pie, which they call a matte cream shade, but this does have a yellow undertone to it. I think this is perfect for the brow bone. It's a perfect skin tone colored eyeshadow. I really do like the way she's got this laid out. She has it very simplified. She's got the shades laid out into quads. I do like how she's kind of taking the guesswork out of it. And I think it's gonna be a very, very good palette for beginners. And she said she wanted to create something that was going to be good for every day. So the first thing I'm going to do is set the concealer with banana cream pie, which is that matte yellow creamy shade. For me, this is the perfect skin tone colored eyeshadow. It's super brightening, it's very opaque as you can see, and I just really, really like this as a base and also as a brow bone highlight. I'm going to start out with cream puff, which is that matte sand. Just put this right in the crease. It's just the perfect crease shade and I feel like this kind of shade would go with so many different looks whether you're using cool tones or warm tones. So now I go into pastry which is the other crease shade. I'm just going to do the exact same thing but kind of keeping it lower in the crease like mainly in the socket and just a little bit in the outer V. And these kind of just like melt into each other. If you want that really nice like fade, these will give you that because I find that they work so, so well together. And I also don't find that these have a lot of fallout or anything. Next, I'm going to go in with my favorite shade. This is Raspberry Cocoa. And I'm going to put that in the crease as well. But there's just something special about this one. And I love the way it blends out. It's so, so pretty. I should probably zoom you guys in. You can't even see what I'm doing. But I feel like a pinkier shade would probably not look all that great with tan crease shades but it just melts into them like i think that's the best word to describe the quality and like how these blend they are more buildable which i do appreciate like they are pigmented they're not so pigmented to the point where they're super harsh and you have to be super careful with them when you lay them down so now i'm gonna go into tote berry we're just gonna focus this in the outer v and kind of lightly putting it in the socket right there. It's pretty much the same format with every look I do. I'm very set in my ways. So I'm gonna go into Licorice Rope, which is that matte black. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of this in the outer V just to very, very lightly smoke it out just a little bit. But as you can see, this is another one that's very buildable. Like it doesn't start out super intense and I really do like that. I hate starting out with too intense of a shade and then trying to like trying to diminish the pigmentation a little bit. So I do appreciate the fact that it's more smoky. I'm busy. So now I'm gonna go back into that taupe berry shade and just top that off. I find that using a lighter shade, like a lighter smoky kind of shade, helps blend out really intense colors. So I'm gonna go back into raspberry cocoa and apply a little bit more of this right where we put it before and kind of going on top of the black. I'm going to go into Sugar Plum. So this does work when it's dry, but I find that it performs a whole lot better when it's wet. It's just very, very buildable like everything else. So I like something a little bit faster and more like more of a pop, like bam in your face. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to wet my brush. I'm just going to put this everywhere that I didn't put any kind of color. So from the inner corner going up to the socket, kind of cutting the crease out just a little bit with it and then going to a little bit past the center just to kind of meet with the outer V shades. So just for funsies, I'm gonna go into Frosted Pink. Again, wet my brush because this is the same kind of deal as the last shade. And just put this on the immediate center just to add a slight pop. You can't really see it a whole lot because it does have a very similar tone to Sugar Plum. So moving on to the brow bone highlight, I'm gonna take a mixture of ice cream and banana cream pie. And I think these shades are perfect. They're really pigmented and they're really, really easy to work with. You don't have to build them up a ton. So for my inner corner highlight, I'm gonna use whipped cream, which is that really pretty frosty, like whitish shade at the bottom. So just put that right in the inner corner and kind of like flick it into the shimmery shade on the lid. That's such a brightening shade. I love that shade so, so much. So I'm gonna go into Tote Berry and just lightly put this on the lower lash line. So now I'm gonna mix cream puff and pastry, those two tan shades we put in the crease and just use these to diffuse that color and then last i'm gonna take just a little bit of raspberry cocoa and just smudge it so moving back to the liquid liner let's go ahead and apply a straight line on the top <sighs> wish me luck
Okay, so there is my eyeliner and that was super fast, like pretty quick application. It's not squiggly or feathered or messed up or anything. It's a really, really good, like precise kind of applicator. I think this would be an amazing product if it were a matte finish. I'm back and I just went ahead and threw on some foundation, concealer, mascara, brows. So moving on to the next cream product we have, this is the Candy Glow Luminizer. This is $30. First thing, $30 for a stick highlighter. Like, is that normal? I just feel like that's very, very overpriced. This is a really weird shade this is more of a pink undertone highlighter and normally I don't like pink highlighters at all they just kind of wash me out they don't go well with my skin tone but even though this is a pink shade it has just a little bit of warmth to it there's something about it that kind of looks like a rose gold <sighs> this, this is probably the most potent smelling product in the collection and I love it so much it just smells like a vanilla buttercream like this smells more vanilla y in my opinion so I'm gonna go ahead and apply this to my cheekbones I don't have powder or anything on I'm just gonna go ahead and blend this out with my finger I will say I find that if you let this sit for too long it kind of gets a little bit harder to blend it does set and she calls this to be more like a like cream to powder finish but if you don't blend this out fast enough and it just sets you can like see it just like one big strut so i do find that it blends out pretty well with my fingers and also a brush i have oily skin but normally i don't get super oily throughout the day i don't get greasy or shiny but this makes me look extremely shiny like halfway into the day it does hold up and it does make my skin look very very dewy and glowy but on me it kind of mimics like a greasy look so if you have super oily skin i would say stay away from this but i will say something i noticed about this and something i've seen other people say is that this does have glitter in it i have watched a couple of reviews of people saying that um the highlight itself kind of fades away and they're left with like nothing but glitter and sparkle i just don't really like this tone it's still very very pretty it's not icy so moving on to the powder so this is the i want candy banana pudding brightening face powder so this is actually i think sold out on the ulta website because i can't find it but i can find it on the Too faced website so this is 30 dollars. it is just a yellow banana powder it's pressed but you can see little tiny specks of purple and blue and pink in here just bottom line this is going to be a product for people with a tan skin tone to a deeper complexion to say this is going to be for all skin tones that's just not true because this is so so yellow and if you pack it on especially with a sponge a sponge is going to really pack it on and it's not sheer at all it kind of just mimics a really warm yellow undertone so if you are someone that has a pretty strong yellow undertone to your skin it's going to look like a regular skin tone colored powder it's not going to really stand out or anything but like around my pores and stuff it looks really cakey and thick and it looks like it's like already settling into them kind of bunching up around them i'm going to zoom you guys in but right here you can tell like where i didn't powder where I powdered. You can tell a distinct yellow tone there and it just looks really, really heavy and matte. If you have a deeper skin tone, you might like this. If you like a matte finish, you might like this. But for me, it's just way too matte and way too yellow. Okay, so moving on to the last product. She came out with several new shades in the Melt and Matte Liquid Lipsticks. Disclaimer, I have extremely dry, extremely dehydrated lips. I do not like liquid lipsticks. But she came out with four new shades. I only picked up one. I picked up the one that would be wearable for me. So these are $21. These are the Melt and Matte Liquid Fied Matte Long Wearing Lipsticks. So she has this shade, which is called Freshly Baked. This is like the second to the lightest shade there is tropical punch which is a matte hot pink it's kind of like a fuchsia pink sweet and sour which is a matte coral red it's a really really bright almost neon kind of shade and then they have melted ice cream which is a matte pinky nude which looks extremely pale and this smells oh so good this smells more sugary as per usual it's very very drying and very emphasizing of lines in my lips but like i said i'm kind of abnormal most human beings don't have as dry lips as i have it does feel pretty comfortable at first and it feels like there's nothing on my lips but for me that's a problem i do not like the feeling of nothingness i have to have like some kind of slip and kind of like some kind of glossiness and i find that where it's so opaque it makes this you know pretty deep like lime demarcation in the inner rim where you can see my actual lip like the actual lip color and look at my lips you can see every line it looks like i took a toothpick and like drew little lines down my lips so yeah after a few minutes this starts like crackling and crumbling i need some lip gloss because i'm getting super cakey up in here oh my god this next butter gloss is oh my god it's like identical to the tone and the shade of freshly baked Quick swatch. This is in Trey Leche. I can't say it. Trey Leche. Trey Leche. You guys know. So even though it's a different finish, here's freshly baked. Oh, my lights are way too bright. Here's freshly baked. Here's Trey Leche. Leche. 
If you don't like matte, like me, go for the Intense Butter Gloss from NYX and Trey Lecce. Trey Lecce's. Ah! Oh. It's way too drying and it does crackle and like bunch up and do the old lime demarcation thing in the inner rim. I do like the shade. It's very pretty, but I don't think it's super unique. I definitely feel like the MVP of this collection is the eyeshadow palette. I think the quality of these shadows is phenomenal. They're so blendable, super, super soft. You can probably tell in the application process, like I really do enjoy applying these eyeshadows. These are probably some of the easiest eyeshadows I have in my collection to work with. So yeah, that is finally it. I gotta say, I'm not thrilled. I'm not as happy as I wanted to be. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it very helpful and very thorough. Thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me today. Thumbs up if you like this video, subscribe, follow me on all my social media, all the links are below, and I hope you guys have a beautiful day. Mwah.